My name is Michael Schuber. I'm from the Institute of Neurology in Konolfingen, Bern, Switzerland. And I will be talking today about deep brain stimulation surgery in early Parkinson's disease. Now, there will be a general lecture on deep brain stimulation or DBS in Parkinson's disease elsewhere. So today I will just address the aspect of timing of DBS in Parkinson's disease. And since there is the most evidence available for subdynamic stimulation uh, on the timing of deep brain stimulation, I will restrict my talk to this target. So this will be about subthalamic nucleus or STN stimulation in Parkinson's disease about timing. Now, with as with every treatment, also with deep brain stimulation, you will ponder, you will weigh your pros and cons uh, in the decision making about this treatment. And you assess the indications, so the potential benefits of your treatment, and weigh them against the risks and contraindications of this treatment. Now, a statement that I often hear is that DBS is um, a last resort treatment once when medications don't work anymore. This statement is a double misconception. First, because deep brain stimulation is not anymore a last resort treatment. And second, it just does not work when medications do not work anymore. Much rather, deep brain stimulation improves those motor signs in Parkinson's that also respond to levodopa. So the levodopa response is a predictor of the benefits that you can expect from subthalamic stimulation. Now you would ask, well, why should one operate when it's the same as medications? The important difference is that with stimulation, you have a much more constant and stable effect of your treatment. You can reduce medications and you improve mainly motor fluctuations and dyskinesia. So the motor complications of the levodopa treatment can be considerably improved with deep brain stimulation and that's the reason for this treatment. Um, this means that uh, when you look at the indication, uh, it's given once the patient has motor complications. Now, when we discuss the matter of early Parkinson's disease, uh, in general, we understand um, early Parkinson's disease to be this period of Parkinson's, which is also called the honeymoon period, when there are no motor complications, when the effects of medications are stable over the day, when there are no fluctuations and no overshooting excessive movements, no dyskinesia. So in the context of deep brain stimulation, we mean early versus late as Parkinson's disease with early or late motor complications. So there is no use of deep brain stimulation in the honeymoon period. Up to now, there has not been any proof for a disease modifying effect of DBS in Parkinson's. So it is not neuroprotective. It does not alter the course of the disease and therefore it should not be used prophylactically, um, but only once the indication is there being motor fluctuations and dyskinesia, and that starts at the end of the honeymoon period. Then a window opens when uh, deep brain stimulation can be beneficial and is a potential treatment. And this time window closes again once prohibitive motor uh, signs appear that are levodopa or stimulation resistant. Mainly uh, on the motor side, these are uh, falls um, and gait problems, on freezing and so on. And on the non-motor side, it's uh, mainly dementia. So there is a period during which 
the deep brain stimulation has the potential to improve the quality of life in a patient. And it's a matter of pondering when earlier or later it should be used. There are two notable exceptions. Um, deep brain stimulation may be uh, discussed in patients who have uh, treatment resistant tremor. So tremor in spite of levodopa treatment, still also if they do not have um, motor complications. And in rare cases where the treatment is absolutely not tolerated, um, deep brain stimulation may be an alternative to medical treatment. But these are exceptions. Generally, we have a time window from beginning of motor fluctuations and dyskinesia till the appearance of contraindications, levodopa resistant signs. Within this, uh, this time window, we uh, make an individual decision together with the patient. It's very much uh, depending on, on the preference of the patient, of the personality, of the willingness to take risks, um, because the risk of the procedure is first surgical. You have uh, the very low but not zero risk of hemorrhage, of infection, of misplacement of the electrode. And you have the potential complications of stimulation in general, mostly reversible with reprogramming. We have um, scientific evidence on the timing when subthalamic stimulation in Parkinson's should be used. Um, this comes mainly from the early STEM study that has been published in 2013 and has confirmed a pilot study that has been start, uh, uh, published in 2007, but started in 2002. And these patients, were treated with subthalamic stimulation early in the course of their uh, uh, motor complications from the levodopa treatment. And the early STEM study showed that um, there was an improvement of quality of life, of motor signs in the off, of dyskinesia fluctuations, even of mood activities of daily living and social adjustment among those who had been operated early as compared to a medical control group um, with uh, best medical treatment. The patients who received best medical treatment could be maintained on their level of motor state and quality of life for the time of uh, over the two years of the study duration. Um, whereas there was a significant improvement of quality of life of those uh, treated with stimulation. Now, you could say uh, the case is clear. However, uh, there is an important limitation. The uh, patients studied in this uh, research were rather young, up to 61 years old, and they had an excellent levodopa response, up uh, above 50 percent. In general, we can say that um, even as early as motor uh, fluctuations and dyskinesia appear in young patients with good levodopa response, deep brain stimulation is more, um, uh, more effective in improvement of quality of life in Parkinson's disease. Exactly when the surgery should be offered um, is a very individual decision and we tried to find out good predictors within that very particular group and found that the main predictor of improvement of quality of life was quality of life at baseline. So if there was impairment of quality of life at the beginning, if there was suffering, if there was something that could be improved, deep brain stimulation was useful. Um, so it is an important issue to really assess the uh, subjective um, suffering, the quality of life at baseline, if there is um, something that can be improved that leads to impairment of quality of life, probably subthalamic stimulation is a reasonable way to go. In general, um, 
for these patients who are above 61, um, we have a bit less evidence on the timing, but we have excellent evidence of on the uh, effectiveness of deep brain stimulation on quality of life. So there it is more a clinical uh, weighing. And um, in general, one can say that we tend nowadays to operate patients rather earlier as uh, movements, as, as uh, motor complications start to appear, at least it should be offered and suggested to the patient so that uh, he or she has the choice of the treatment, uh, which in the case of subthalamic stimulation is a complicated, but a very, very strong and useful one. Thank you for your attention.